tends to um, overheat milk and it denatures the, the protein molecules that are in the milk. Uh, within, the reason why we want thicker dairy is because within the water refraction of milk and skim milk are dissolved um, biologically active cow hormones and potentially uh, allergenic proteins. Fatty and fermented dairy foods are safer. Raw milk proteins are more easily digested than pasteurized milk proteins. Dry lean meats, which are protein rich, but fat poor are to be avoided. Avoid dry lean meats because there's too much protein, there's not enough fat, and you get over that 15% um, protein limit uh, that we should do each day because over that 15%, it can be demonstrated that people have protein toxicity. So if a lot of people out there are trying to be real healthy, they're eating all the, 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 the complete grains, the, um, the whole grains, they're eating tons of chicken and turkey, which are all the dry meats, they've, they're having much too much protein in their diet, they're getting too much uh, wheat germ and glutenin and um, other toxins in the grains, and the only good thing they're doing is vegetables, and they're probably staying off of dairy because they say that cr pr produces mucus. Yet all the European countries have raw cheese regularly on a daily basis, and we are 38th in world health. So the Europeans are doing something that we need to start copying. Fasting. There's not enough time to cover this subject on this show, uh, maybe in a future show, but with all my patients, I show them how to do short-term ketogenic fasts. These are easy to do. They, generate the, they regenerate the liver and work wonders for neurological and liver disorders. Include white rice, a safe starch, regularly in all forms, noodles, cakes, whole rice, and spaghetti. Brown rice these days has too many toxins in the bran of the outer shell. I know, we've all been taught to eat brown rice instead of white rice, and this is a turnaround. Um, it is a turnaround, and it's being done because we know more now. Eat only one piece of fruit a day. It can actually go to three, but if you think about three every day, you'll end up just getting too much in the long run. Think about having a piece of fruit each day. Um, as well as, uh, as all fructose must be converted into glucose by the liver. Otherwise, fructose is toxic to the systemic circulation, and we don't want to overtax the liver. We have fruit, have fruit with heavy cream. It's just a wonderful way to combine fats with uh, any time you have sweets. That's a smart thing to do. Always combine some fats with sweets. You can even melt coconut um, uh, oil or butter and pour it over, um, over fruit. It really is quite wonderful to have it that way. That's the way the islanders have been doing it for um, millennia. Try to get all animal products as grass-fed. Try to get all dairy as raw and unpasteurized. You can have two eggs a day or four yolks a day. Cholesterol will be lowered by the good saturated fats in the animal products and will not be, cre and, and will not be, cholesterol will not be created by too high a diet in carbohydrates. Have 400 calories a day of simple carbohydrate starch. Potatoes, sweet potatoes are best, for, or from rice or taro. If you do not eat at least this amount of carbohydrate, your liver will manufacture the glucose you need. And this is, again, another undue burden on the liver. So we don't want the, the liver to have to produce glucose um, occupying its, itself. It has thousands of other things to do. We also don't want the... the liver to have to take a whole lot of fructose and turn it into uh, glucose and glycogen. Uh, we want to unburden the liver as much as we can. Make stew with bones and use a little vinegar to digest the bones, ligaments, and cartilage. In other words, eat what you are. If you've got problems with your knee, think about eating foods that have all those same types of molecules in them. It really makes sense. This is Jim and and his wife. Have at least two tablespoons of coconut oil a day and at least one tablespoon of organic salted butter a day. This is probably the most important thing that I've said so far on this program. Two tablespoons of coconut oil or butter and one tablespoon of organic salted butter each day. Salt food to taste. The kidneys control blood pressure. They do a wonderful job when the whole body is healthy. 
Carbohydrates harden arteries and result in increased blood pressure. This diet eliminates that. For a sweetener, use turbinado sugar. Then when you get used to it, use maple syrup. And then when you get used to that, switch to stevia or just have berries with some, some heavy cream or a piece of fruit. Um, this is a way of starting with, you know, uh, sugars if you're used to them and working it so that you can uh, wean off of them. Uh, Paul had a hard, tr hard time with sweets um, getting used to this new diet. In the realm of tree nuts and um, nut butters, macadamia in Brazil are the best. Uh, almonds are fine. Um, they are the most preferred nuts, and the nuts to avoid are walnuts because the omega-3 to 6 ratio is so poor uh, with them. One of the ways we can find out how sick a person might be is by doing, using medical analysis, blood tests and urine tests, and then treating them with nutrition. We do a blood test of 52 different substances. Um, here we have uh, uh, what was done on their, um, their first blood test, and then their most current one is in the left column. I have a close-up of that. Uh, yellow is a warning, red is a high risk, and blue is critical. And you could see that they, when this person came in, they had a lot of reds and a couple of blues, and eventually they had mostly yellows and only one red. They did quite well. We're testing for cholesterol, the entire profile, the entire thyroid profile. This is 52 items long. Most doctors test for 25 or so. We have a little stricter value. The laboratory tells you that if you're between here and here, you're doing fine. But we know that people who are, are, no, they tell you if you're between the dotted lines, you're doing fine. You're abnormal if you're in the blue. But a lot of people who are here in the beige are not feeling good and they don't know why. And everybody tells them that their values are normal. We use a much stricter range. So we like to get people in this place. We use hair analysis as well because the hair follicle has a blood artery and a vein going into it to create the hair shaft. And it pulls a lot of substances from the blood and puts them in the hair. Then we test the hair and we find um, a lot of heavy metals, that's the top half, and we find a lot of good metals and a lot of good minerals. The heavy metals should not be moving to the right here. We want them all back on the zero line. The other ones that we want a little bit of should be in the middle, and we don't want too little of them or too much of them. A very valuable test, a very inexpensive way to find out a lot of information too. The hair contains minerals and essential elements like copper, chromium, iodine, sulfur, and iron, 22 essential elements. It tests for 17 heavy metals like arsenic, lead, mercury, tin, and aluminum. A blood test alone will miss this. Key points. We also do many more tests than the 52 and the hair analysis that I showed you. We include cancer markers. We do cancer markers um, before a person uh, is suspected of having cancer. This way, we find out if it's on its way there. We check the trend. So if you've been wondering if you're doing OK, you want to know if you're moving towards that, we can test the cancer markers and tell you how you're doing. A healthy range is created. We use that narrower range that I talked about earlier. Um, lab results are compared with other people's lab results and um, how well they did on particular nutrients is also uh, looked at so that when nutrients are recommended for you, we know the track record on those nutrients and um, when we prescribe them to you, we can do so with confidence. Uh, we also do follow-up studies, as you saw, where we list the prior results with the current results so that we are evaluating how well we're doing on the nutritional program and it's not guesswork. If you were to design a better system, could you? I couldn't. I think it's wonderful and that medicine will be practiced like this in the future. The results speak for themselves, however. Uh, you can visit my website and read the case histories that are, th that are there. Triple W, alternative integrative medicines, plural, dot, in, uh, dot info, I-N-F-O. Um, in the news, we have some new things that were, have taken place. Um, 
Uh, when cells know they are dying and they wish to euthanize, they oxidize essentially polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are omegas 3s and 6s, which are the polyunsaturated fatty acids, and they turn them into um, a cosinoids, which creates inflammation. This is, a good infl this is a good inflammation, and the cell does this on purpose. The acosinoids trigger the immune system to come and phagocytize or eat the dying cell. Aspirin and ibuprofen prevent this in their anti-inflammatory capacity, and so whenever we take it for, for pain control, we are impeding our ability to house clean dying cells. I know this is a mouthful, but if you've recorded this show, you can go back and read it again. Uh, if, in the news also, if we have too many free radical molecules in the body, these are the bad guys, and too much polyunsaturated fatty acids, um, the polyunsaturated fatty acids are oxidized, and if there is not enough glutathione to scavenge the dead cells, aldehydes are formed, and they create oxidized low-density lipoproteins, the bad kind of LDL, and this leads to atherosclerosis. So essentially what we're saying is if we allow free radicals to exist in the body, um, we end up with problems metabolizing fats, and it leads to hardening of the arteries. A nutraceutical is an extract of foods with a medicinal effect on human health. The nutraceutical is usually contained in a medicinal format, such as a capsule, tablet, or powder in a prescribed dose. More rigorously, a nutraceutical implies that the extract of food is demonstrated to have a physiological benefit or provide protection against chronic disease. That's a wonderful thing. That makes nutraceuticals medicines, perhaps the most modern medicines that we have. Of the different modalities that there are for healthcare, structural, molecular, talk therapy and energetic therapy. The molecular therapy is the most interesting. It's food, nutraceuticals, herbology, and drugs. Let's take a closer look at that. These are all chemicals. Foods, chemicals, nutraceuticals are chemicals, herbs are chemicals, and so are controlled drugs. They all go in by the mouth and to the intestines and then to the blood and then to the cells. They all go into the cells and affect chemistry there. So in other words, pharmaceuticals that one gets a prescription for are no different molecules than our nutraceuticals. They all go to the same place. Food, nutraceutical, and herbs are naturally occurring. They're non-patentable and remain at low cost. Controlled drugs are molecular as well. They're not natural. They're patentable, and so they are at high cost, at least at first. Um, under molecular treat treatments, uh, Natural occurring substances like herbs and nutraceuticals, they make up for what is missing in our food, they supply what the body would normally require, and they make the body work the way it did before it became ill. However, controlled drugs are man-made molecules that are different from what are found in foods or healthy bodies, and they treat the symptoms instead of the cause of the ailment. Smart medicines are nutraceuticals. The last 30 years have shown an explosion in nutritional knowledge. The only difference between nutraceuticals and controlled drugs is that they are found in nature and so cannot be patented for profit. Nutraceuticals are medicines. They are complex molecules. This shows how an enzyme works. Essentially, an enzyme is this gray material. Molecules come into it. They fit in. The enzyme can change both of those molecules and let them go and be different things. Now, enzymes... Um, it can be made of vitamins, minerals, or amino acids. So if you're wondering what these things do in your body, what do we need vitamins for or minerals or amino acids, it's because usually they're acting as an enzyme to change one molecule into another. That needs to take place. Don't stop your medications unless you make changes. Uh, not wise to just drop your medications if you're not going to make some nutritional changes in your life. Make the nutritional changes first. Pharmaceuticals give support, but once nutraceuticals begin to affect a cure, then follow-up blood and hair tests will show that it is wise to reduce them. Diet plays a large role. All of this must be taken into consideration, and a chemically balanced person can handle most stress physically and emotionally. Um, 
So stress, even though it's in all of our lives, if we